Hi, my name is Jeremy Cook, and in this video I'll be talking about my latest strand beast, the Clear Beast, made out of clear polycarbonate. As you can see, I got it to a point where I can stand on its own and move its legs around when supported by cardboard boxes. What you see here is a crude drawing of what I intend to make this beast into. You've got your motors and gears and your Jensen style legs, which you've already seen. On top, you've got a bike, bike flag or kind of a tail and a clear head made out of polycarbonate tubing. On the side, you've got a pan tilt assembly and for the head too. The face is made out of LED eyes, LED mouth, and a GoPro for an eye, so you can see everything in an FPV view. So to start out with, I had the components cut with a late water jet machine. I certainly don't have the capabilities for this, so another shop did it for me and I was definitely grateful for that, it saved me a lot of time. Besides, it, it looks, looks really cool in this video. Once that was done, I had a box full of parts, spacers, gears, uh, some body components. And I put the gears together to make sure they worked okay. You can see here, they're, they, do, they do work okay when put on pieces of aluminum, aluminum rod. So that's, that's a good, good sign. So for the body pieces, I had to open up the holes a little bit more on the top and bottom to make it fit. Not a big deal, I just had to do a little overcutting. So once that was done, I was able to put them together. You can see my hands here are, have gloves on because I actually cut one of my hands trying to insert the, insert the plugs in, push it too hard and took some skin off. So that wasn't very fun. So I'm, I'm testing the motors out here to see if they, they fit. Needed a little more clearance, so took out my trusty Dremel tool. It's been, been a really great tool. I mean, I can't believe how much I've used it. And there's the motors, and that's that's kind of how the body will look eventually. Now for the uh, the holes and everything, I had to take out a take out some material. That's a 501 reamer. It wasn't quite enough, but besides those those longer pieces. I had to cut some circular pieces, so I'm, I'm making a, a fixture here so that I can set that up easily. I actually did something similar in one of my other videos using aluminum, but this is MDF, which for my purposes should, should work okay. And there's me setting it up in my vise. The great thing is I can just set this up one time and then the, the bit should be, should be lined up. So that, uh, with that reamer, it worked okay, but it still had a hard time going in. So something like this, you needed to roll pretty easily. So I had to use a use a drill bit. I actually ended up using a 13 millimeter drill bit because that equals, uh, I think it's like point, point 0.5118, which is just enough clearance in this situation. I also had to modify some, some couplings, some uh, helical couplings. Uh, that, that caused a bit of a problem later, um, but we'll, we'll get to that. But for now, it looks looks pretty good. Um, goes on the on the motor, flexes nicely. Maybe a little too flexible. So then I needed to cut out some aluminum aluminum shafts. I made everything two inches, which wasn't perfect for everything, but it worked out pretty well. You can see here. Apparently, I haven't learned that things get pretty hot when you cut them. No problem. Just use a little water. Should be cool after that, right? Yeah. Guess not. So anyway, after cutting out quite a few of these, I, I learned a little bit better how to handle hot, hot materials. I then put them on my lathe to face off the, the front of them. So you can see it, it took a, a, lot of, a lot of filing. But the lathe did help with that. Eventually, I mean, that worked, but eventually I learned a new method, a better method, where I actually use the cutting tools from the lathe itself. I mean, I wouldn't say that's a new method, just something, I don't know, I just avoided it for some reason. And after that, it worked worked pretty well. Just face it off with this. Did a little finishing with the the files and had a, a nice, nice edge. So once I had a, a whole lot of those, it was time to put my legs together. And 
And this is after after quite a bit of drilling to make those holes wide enough to get, get everything through and flexible. So there I am, getting my fourth one done. Flexes nicely and yeah, they look, look nice stacked up together. So at this point it was time to test it with the gear that would push it around. It worked and that's uh, that was definitely a good thing. And then I put the body together with the aluminum rods, the half inch aluminum rods. These rods were, were ground to size, so that was generally not the problem. You know, earlier I just had to put a lot of holes in these so it was it would fit correctly. And that's the bottom piece. Kind of wish I hadn't taken the cover off because it got kind of scratched up later. So then it was time to put the legs on. You can see me putting them on here with thrust bearings, you know, so I could fasten them down tightly and still have, you know, not too much friction. I actually worked for a plant that made thrust bearings, many of the world's thrust bearings actually, but these are not from that plant, they're a different brand. I don't, I don't work there anymore. So you can see it's working pretty well. You know, the pressure on it should keep it from moving back and forth too much, hopefully keep it aligned well. Oh, I had to take off a little bird to keep it to keep it working smoothly. And there it goes. Nice. And I had this added this support piece on the side that should keep things a little more rigid. And you can see me willing the, the thing to work correctly. Which worked for now, but maybe later later there was a bit of a problem. I had glued the body together for now because it would support it, but still be, allow it to be taken off later if I needed to, which I definitely needed to. In order to allow the shafts to turn the gears, I used these shaft collars and put a, a roll pin in them, and I'll offset roll pin so that, that pin would turn the gears around. You'll see how it works in just a second. So I'll use a center drill first and then a drill like used in some other parts of this video. It just works nicely. And then I pressed it in with my vise. I realized later what I could have done is just put a some sort of plug onto my mill, milling machine spindle and push it down that way. But uh, you know, hindsight is 2020. This this method worked okay too. And I'm putting the, the corresponding hole in one of the gears. And as you can see here, it worked, worked pretty well. Put it in the gear and then fasten it down to the shaft. And then I just twisted it around and obviously no pressure on it there, but it worked, worked well later. So yeah, everything's looking promising at this point. You can see it actuating two of the legs. And here, Here's another view of that. At this point I tried I tried getting it to work with electricity using six volts there. That wasn't quite enough. But I tried using 12 volts, which is what it was designed for, which worked well on two legs, quite well in fact. Now, when I tried four legs, it worked kind of going forwards, actually pretty well. But when I tried to reverse it, there was a bit of a problem. The problem, at least one of the problems, was that the beam coupler that I used earlier had taken quite a bit of material out of the center. I believe that's weakened it, and as you can see here, it just, it just broke. So the beast isn't walking at this point, but it can support itself on the floor. Hopefully soon it'll be able to walk with a remote control, maybe a tail, a clear head. And I'm looking forward to see what comes next. So be sure to subscribe or give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.